Well, in the building, on the way to the TV station building, you learn about Eleven's past. Now that she, the building is within sight, you can finally head inside. And it's only when you reach the bottom of the TV station and look up at it that you realize that it stands there like a Tower of Babel. It's top out of sight. Despite the bright white lights, you feel as if you are facing an abyss. Your already gloom mood suddenly becomes overwhelming. You understand this feeling too well, like being called back to work just before bed, with no means to vent your grievances. Well, hello, welcome to this building. Pleased to meet you in this place at this moment. As you open the doors to the building, you are immediately plunged into darkness. Then a buzzling light suddenly lights up the building, blinding you. A pleasant female voice rings in your ears, forcing you to squint and look up. The walls of this gloomy inferior are lined with the countless LSD screens of various sizes. Perched on the walls, they peer at you like prisoners. And in those eyes, you see many duplicates of Eleven. Whatever you need, just name it. I will provide you with a service beyond your imagination. On the big TV screen, Eleven is greeting and briefing you with a smile. Her voice is sweet, her smile is bright, and her outfit impeccable. But it makes your scalp, scalp tingle. Your voice. Is this call at 3 a.m.? But why 11? Why is she here? Didn't you ask me to be here? Ask you to be here? You remember that poem and that you told 11 there might be clues at the TV station. Could this then suddenly see be your own request? What we're looking for is the key to get out of here. Whenever you want to leave or stay, I, we will always be with you. Wherever you are, you can call me. Why, my eyes serve you. My hands serve you. My voice serves you. This is eerie. I, we will always serve you. What? What does this all mean? We are the perfect product. Perfect product? You are people. Or maybe not. But calling yourself a product never sounds like a good idea. Don't you remember? Don't you think so? Of course I don't think so. Hold on, suddenly you realize that her question isn't directed at you. Eleven, don't listen to her, it's not like that. You turned around, waiting to grab Eleven, but you find her staring intently at those visions of herself, unmoving. Her lips move slightly and faint voice oozes out of her throat. Bit by bit, phrase by phrase, it's becoming clear. Yes, you're right. I'm the call at 3 a.m. I'm the host of the program. Hmm. I've always remembered. I remember now. From when I first started working until now, how I speak, why I speak. Whenever you are, you can call me. My I serve you. My hands serve you. My voice serves you. Everything that makes me will be at your service. Your needs are above all. The cold white light from the screen is cast on her face, revealing a horrifying green hue. The light in her eyes fades away again. 
You're taken aback. The girl you know is a greenhorn who left campus not long ago. How did that innocent girl suddenly become... You... You're the person behind the call 3am? No, this must be... What have you done? Are you controlling her? The person on the screen smiles, lifting the corners of her mouth without showing her teeth. カノジョ。カノジョは私。うん。いや、this she melts and floats away like silhouette of the on a salva sound wave entering the endless screens. All the elevens are smiling down at you. Her eyes, her mouth, her hands, and her heart, they're all watching you. You look around to find the entrance you came in through has disappeared, blending into dark walls. All you can do now is cross these screens and enter this, this unknown building. On the check-in counter next to you, a black walkie-talkie flashes a few times, apparently receiving an incoming message. You shoot a glance, suppressing your anger. You walk toward the counter and pick up the walkie-talkie. You press the button on the side. After a few cracks, the radio signal. You hear a familiar voice. Congratulations! You've helped Eleven to find her own voice. No, the truth of his world has not been revealed. That's not her voice. Or rather, that's not the voice she wants, am I right? <laughs> How can that be? This is her dream. You slam the walkie-talkie on the counter. The signal pauses for a moment, then comes back with a sharper, sharper, uh, sharper with a cacophony of noise. She wants to be better, to be perfect, just like the person in her dreams. That's a product, the perfect product in the boss's eyes. Thank you for making her the perfect product. It really is Oh man It's really is hard to think about this kind of stuff Perfect product, huh? What is even really the perfect product? Hmm. I guess I could I would uh, like to consider myself someone who is good. I really would. But am I really? Sinner warrant? What is this? What does Sinner Warrant do? Hmm. 
weird. Perfect product. What is really? After the decision, Levin falls into a trap, gets absorbed, gets absorbed by a mysterious voice, and becomes the cold soul called Perfect Product. He chases after the master and behind all in anger, swearing to get Levin back. The black walkie-talkie finally goes dead, having been smashed as a scrap metal by you. He drops in and returns to the countless screens, staring hard at them and trying to spot Eleven. But every Eleven on these screens repeats the same words, enters her face at the same angle, as if it's all been programmed. Eleven, where are you? Tell me, just give me a direction and I'll find you. And one of those screens smiles at you, showing herself off at all angles. For directions, please proceed to the information desk on the second floor. I will provide you with multiple answers. Then the door with on air sign lit up lit up on and it opens, seemingly inviting you in. You take another look at eleven on the screen. She's still smiling. The record player software beside her on the right stubbornly spinning. The offices in the building are all lit up, but there is no one around. The map hanging at the entrance of the floor, like a broken channel guide, flickers with noise and error signals. So where exactly is this information desk? After hearing a question, the model functioning map suddenly displays an image. Though the, her clothes and hairstyle are different, you can still recognize the woman on the, on the map. It's eleven. <laughs> Nah, this is the, uh, different eleven. The information desk on your left. Just keep going straight and you'll find it. Eleven, I can recognize you even if you change clothes. I see. I guess... Chief really is into black clothes, huh? Mm, interesting. <laughs> Thank you for your compliment. My attire, hairstyle, and makeup all serve to suit your taste. I hope you like them. And with that, Eleven on the map smiles at you and disappears into the noise. Under the yellowish lights of the corridor, the passage of the left on the left extends forward, interrupted by the doors of the several rooms. You step forward and suddenly hear the noise of radio waves, a sound you've been hearing since arriving in this world, in this very corridor. Thank you for turning into the new today's news, where I'll be bringing you to the latest news happening every minute. And I'm on the side of the corridor lights up inside a light colored uniform. In the light colored uniform, and with her hair tied up neatly, a host who looks exactly like Eleven sits in front of a green screen recording a news program. You don't like my hairstyle and makeup today? No problem. It's, if it's your request, I'll change them immediately. The Levin grabs her hair to pull off the whole thing above her neck and swaps it for another one under the green screen. This time she has short length hair, looking sweet and innocent. Thanks for pointing out my mistakes. I'm still under unable to satisfy everyone who needed this at once. I'm not qualified host, a qualified product. Through the small window at the door, you can barely see Levin sitting in front of the green screen with a stiff smile, responding to non-existent voices. What you see is the most beautiful on-screen personality here. As requested by the audience, she's been made to appear in all existing programs. As for you, please don't feel embarrassed. Your needs are my orders and I'll always deliver them.
The sound from the room uh, on the other side draws, drowns out the ending of the news. Though the small window you see a row of eleven standing in there, still smiling as always, camera flash doing off in their eyes. The feel of total, the feel is total different, but looks identical as the eleven you know. At the same time, they feel. Hello, welcome to the call of the 3 a.m. I'm your host, Eleven. About that legend. Yes, your understanding is perfect. I'm indeed, indeed the ghost lady, it's me. Every word and sentence I say and all my feelings exist just for you. You can barely hear her. I will follow your perception and try to become her. Your happiness is what I desire, is the reason this voice exists and the purpose of Eleven's existence. Last room sitting in front of the microphone, Eleven lifts her head and looks straight at you by the door. I will become the most perfect product. It's suffocating. The further you go, the harder it becomes to breathe. As you pass by more rooms and more levels, but mechanical, rigid forms make the invisible chains weigh you down more. At the end of the corridor, it's simple information desks. As you expected, the person sitting at the desk is also Eleven. Everyone here is Eleven. The one being watched, displayed, and toyed with at all her. But it's not just her. Eleven, where are you? Answer me. Hello, I'm right here. You almost have to drag your body through those last few steps. You slam on the desk and out each word through gritted teeth. You are not her, bring her back. This is what her wish. This is her wish too. She wants to be the best radio host, and the best radio host is the best product. She achieved her dream. Let's clap for her, shall we? Don't you want to cheer her on? Alright, now you're a listener too. We can also fulfill your wishes. You clench your fist and slam it hard on the counter. Receptionist Levin doesn't look at all displeased and looks at you with a smile. Do you want me to become that girl? That girl who knows nothing, who's timid and docile, and does whatever she is told? I can be her if you want. After all, I'm the best radio host, the perfect product. I don't need you to become anyone or anything. And you should never listen to anyone who tells you to do that. We came here to find your voice. And what do you want, you want to say with it? What do you want to hear? What do you want to say? What is the voice that you desire? The perfect product before you keeps her smile, but you spot a tiny crack spreading from her corner of her mouth. Suddenly, one, two, three, and even more voices echo in the space, bouncing back and forth. They repeat the words of that eleven, assaulting you constantly. The shackles in your consciousness tighten instantly. This sends an extremely powerful mania power, filling the space from the bottom to top. No one else should decide what you want to become. Say it! Who you truly want to become. Release the shackles. That last sentence, the red signal light disappears and the shackles flash. You unleash the power, slice through the mania, and then escape. But when you come out, what you see is not the corridor, but the emergency exit. Behind the door is only staircase spirally upward endlessly. Come on, I gotta snap out of this soon. 
or I don't know how else to help you. Inwardly cursing this interminable, interminable shift, you step onto that endless staircase. Uh, this really is pretty tough, huh? Huh, yeah. I'm supposed to be talking, but it's just like so really it's really hard to It's really hard to I'm I'm like sitting here contemplating almost all this shit. Perfect product, huh? Perfect product. The masterminds using sound to assimilate the victim's thoughts. Rebellious in defined words are key to resisting assimilation. The mysterious voice assimilates Eleven, who came to the TV station with Chief, transforming her into a perfect product that can please everyone. Uh, yeah. On the rooftop. Finally pinpointed Eleven. Uh, you search every roof of the station and finally pinpointed Eleven's location with the shackles. Following the path cleared by the shackles, you head to the rooftop on the TV station building. You don't know how long you've been climbing, but you don't feel tired. In this world, physical labor is no longer the cause to feel fatigue. Psychological and emotional exhaustion and pain can stop this heart from beating at any time. You push open the door, the sky feels so close here, on the open rooftop, so close that it seems that you could jump and grab the stars. But now is not the time for stargazing, and those who ever came Probably didn't come for, for stars for the stars either. Come on, don't stop stop me up like this. Does this not count as a rebellious act? You walk towards the center of the rooftop, where there is a table, and on the table is a phone that looks familiar. Isn't this the bureau's phone? You pull the chair and sit down, looking at the familiar phone. Sure enough, at the moment it rings. <laughs> Hello, this is the call of 3 a.m. I'm your host, Eleven. If there's enough anything you want to share, or if you want to ask me anything, feel free. I have a question. How I can rebel, rebel against this world? Why do you want to rebel against it? Or would you like me to do it? If this is your wish, I can make it come true. You have found your voice of resistance, haven't you? Yes, thanks to your assistance. Then why don't you continue to fulfill your dream instead of letting others shape you? I exist to serve you. I want to become what you want me to become. Are there voices what you want to hear? Do you still remember what first inspired you? The dream you once told me about? Is it true? The dream of becoming a radio host, hearing the voices you want to hear, and saying what you want to say. Do you remember? Do you still remember all these? 
On the other end of the phone, the sweet contrived voice has gone silent, leaving only her breath and the hiss of the signal. As the night sky darkens and thickens, the surrounding mania seems to be piling up while all the emotions threatening to drown you at the slightest sign of change. But you're not afraid. You have faith in the person on the other end of the phone. What kind of radio host do you want to become? What is your dream voice? But no matter what, know that you already have the best voice. And I like every word you say. You already have the best voice, and I already like every word you say. I... I don't like being made into a story or an image just for others' amusement. Yeah. Uh, want to hear more harmonious, wonderful praises, not this kind of. You hear Eleven's voice. At this very moment, the star begins to fall, being falling down on you from the sky. As, as sparks of sliv silver light flash by the table, the chair, the phone, and the rooftop all vanish. By the railing at the end, st at the end stands a familiar figure. Eleven! You rush over to grab her, but at that same moment, a star falls towards you, and the massive impact throws you off the rooftop. Like a falling star, a meteor falls from the mania sky, and the world collapses again. You rush towards Eleven, who is falling from the rooftop, hoping to, to catch her at the last moment. Thank you, Alive Zero. This is not the kind of host I want to be. These are not the voices I want to hear. What I really want are gentler, kinder words, a more beautiful language. I want to hear words like that, not this kind of... The trembling wind envelops you with a screeching of howl, yet your voices carry you into each other's ears clearly. Your voice is different from usual. No, perhaps it's the same, but it carries a different meaning now. Yes, and for that, I want to thank you. Thank you for making me realize that I should voice what I truly want. The last star falls and the entire building is destroyed in an instant. This world also begins to slowly collapse. This world has regained her voice. The eerie purple begins to peel off gradually revealing a red glow like a sunrise. It's over, Eleven. Let's return to reality. I know you found what you want to say and do most, right? Yes, I like it, and I look forward to it. It really is very simple to completely fall into the uh, negative headspace, really, is it? It really, it really is. In the world where everything is solved by clicks and what's most negative, what's the most sensational stuff, like people who even avoid that stuff, I constantly watch videos that I make me angry, right? It's just like that's something. It's like I almost want to be angry, right? Like I want to be thrashing something. Like I watch Starfield videos, even though I know I know that this kind of game is just not for me. And I'm just gonna walk, look at it and roll roll my eyes at it, just kind of like ah. Oh. This fucking stupid shit, right? Uh, or people who want to post stuff on Twitter because that makes them feel like they're alive. But it's really so easy to ignore the good voices out there, right? The stuff you enjoy, the stuff you like want to experience. Like this, like for example this, right? I stream what I want to experience. And then like I've heard so many people tell me I should be doing what's popular i should be doing the uh, shooter games i should be doing the 
horror games. I should be doing the the stuff that is just brainless slop that is everyone else that everything everyone else is consuming because that's what's best for me, I guess. And I was just like wondering, is it really, right? Like, is it really best for me? But then again, I want—I do want to be successful at what I do. But then again, I want to do what I find fun. It's like, what do you do in this situation, really? Like, how do you approach this kind of philosophy, right? Like, you want to remain yourself, but also play the most popular thing, but also remain yourself. But it's like, how do you cons co how do you make those two things? How do you focus on the good voices? Like, what do you do here, right? It's just like, I still don't know the answer to this. Really, I don't. I don't think anyone really knows. I don't even need, I don't even think even people who are up there right now, the most the most popular streamers and VTubers, I don't I don't think even they know the answer. It's kind of a complicated thing, isn't it? But at least the world is full of love, full of kindness, full of good voices. Everywhere. Ava looks at you with an anticipating smile. Suddenly, intense pain pierces your consciousness, a warning from the shackles. At the last moment before this world crumbles entirely. She swears awake in Eleven's memories, and she remembers her dreams of becoming a radio program host and the message she wanted to convey to her audience. What? So I was actually listening to my radio station? I'm so happy! Before this, I was uh, always listening to Dead Lover Radio because that's the only program people in Syndicate can receive. But I really love, like, Love and Little Daisy. I hope one day I can become super like, superstar like them. Today I bring you my the meowing of my kitty. Ms. Lawan, thank you for replying to my letter. I can't tell you how happy I was to receive your letter, but I didn't expect you to run into trouble. I hope everything is fine. My life is still the same, but knowing that you're there for me makes me feel like nothing can bring me down anymore. Thank you, Miss Eleven. All right, that's it. Won't bother you anymore. I hope you can get rid of your trouble soon. I will always listen to your show. MG, I'm glad my company has cheered you up a little bit. Although I'm in trouble, this led me to meet a special person. This person accompanies me, just like I accompany you. When they were together, I feel like a bit braver, and I can say no to things I don't like. I hope to create a world filled with only beautiful sounds. Like so In such a world, you, me, and everyone else will no longer get hurt. Don't you think so? Huh. Yeah. The Crimson Wild. 